Welcome to one of those, the show that exposes the art of sneaker culture. I'm your host, Adam Butler, back with another episode. Thank you so kindly for being here. We're going to jump right into it today. I got an amazing guest, man. My homegirl, DJ Heat, is in the building. She's the official DJ for the Washington Wizards and the Washington Mystics. She worked in the bubble. She does all sorts of cool work, and she's a TikTok star, man. So, you know, I'm honored to have her. Let's jump right into it. Without further ado, DJ Heat, Heat, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Adam Butler, <laughs> for having me. The Butler Did It Studios. <laughs> Yo, listen, me and this one go back super duper far. So this this hey. interview may go off the rails a couple of times. I'm just saying it for the people that don't know. <laughs> All right, but I do want to. I want to start off by saying that I am extremely proud of you. You know, you've always been doing big things. I mean, since I met you, but. You know, since the last time we've really had a conversation, you become a TikTok star. You DJing for professional franchises. This is this is it, it, this is just the type of stuff I like to see from people that I've been rocking with for some time, man. I'm I am I am you know I want to give you your flowers before I we get started. That. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, and you as well. Seeing Thank you. big things of you, I'm like, oh, he getting all the deals. Hey, look, I'm yeah. trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to get like. Look, look, let me go do that black thing. I'm trying to get like you. You know what I'm saying? I get like you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no, it's super dope, man. So tell me about you know that atmosphere. You're DJing for the Wizards. You're DJing for the Mystics. Like, tell me about that 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 atmosphere. What's that like to be the person that kind of controls the mode, really? for the for the stadium man it's it's really really exciting especially because you know you know me i'm i'm a dc girl through and through and i'm a fan of all dc sports teams so yeah. the dj for two teams that i came up watching yeah <laughs> i've been fans of is like like wow this is surreal i get to be at all these home games and you know <laughs> and really see all the action yeah in person as far as the music that's that's a whole another level as well and is i could say getting into sports it has made me better as a dj as well because a lot of people think that it's just playing music yeah um sports djing is a whole different level of djing like you have to know what to play like if the team goes on a a 10-0 run and the other team calls a timeout what song am i going to play you know to get the crowd amp or you know there's only three seconds left, you know, we about to inbound the ball. This is it's a lot of situations that yeah. that I mean, we watch sports. So imagine, you know, we we know all the situations that the players prepare for, but all of us that work in it's called game presentation, mm. we have to prepare for that as well. You know, we be on headset like during certain timeouts. Like, okay, if the team calls another timeout, we're gonna do this and you know, send out dancers or you know, we might do t-shirts. It, it's it's a lot, but I appreciate it. Like I said, it's definitely made me better as a DJ as well. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you get into this? How'd you how'd you end up, you know, being on the, the radar of the Mystics and then and then the Wizards? Um, I actually applied for this position like a million different times <laughs> <laughs> before I, I finally got it. Um, I think the first time I ever applied was like in maybe like 2011. I always get the dates mm. mixed up. But in total, I applied for this position four different times yeah. before I actually got the job um which was in in 2017 when i became the mystics dj yeah and you know learning a lot from my boss at the time that hired me shout out to uh jared ronsky mm. i learned a lot from him about when it comes to sports music and, and what to do and i was lucky enough that in 2018 i got offered the position to be the wizards dj yeah. so i was like okay i guess I, you know they like what i'm doing with the mystics so <laughs> come, come on over here to the wizards yeah. as well so the interest really got into um a lot of people were were, were actually telling me about the position mm -hmm. and I, a lot of people believed that i could do it before i even believed that i could do it i could say that literally every single time those four times that i applied mm -hmm. i was told by someone else to do it yeah and by the time I got to that fourth time, you know, again, someone else was like, Heat, you should apply. You know, they got to open it. I'm like, man, I know I applied three times already. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, do it. I'm telling you, do it. And so, you know, that fourth time was the charm. But looking back um, on those previous three times before I got the position, yeah. I know I definitely wasn't ready yet. Um, 
I, I gained a lot more experience over the years since between that first time I applied to that final time when I, I did get the job. So I, I say all of that to say this, you know, it's, it's all in that preparation and, and timing. You know, mm -hmm. if you really want something, you know, it doesn't come easy and you feel like you might have deserved it at this point in your life, but it's going to come through at a better time where you're better prepared for it in your career and in your life. Right, right. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, that's just that's just the the epitome of grind and mm -hmm. sticking with it and all of that stuff. I love hearing that. That's so super dope. And, you know, I've I've I've, I've actually seen you on TV a couple of times. Um, <laughs> do you think I don't know if you and, and, you know, people sharing pictures of you and stuff. And, yeah. you know, I'm just I again, I, I, I guess I'm just so proud of you. I think it's super Thank duper you. cool. So we're here to talk about sneakers. OK, mm -hmm. we're here to yeah. talk about sneakers. But I do want to I do want to ask one thing about as it correlates to professional basketball and sneakers mm -hmm. in particular the WNBA right I think the mm -hmm. WNBA is starting to finally get the respect and the popularity obviously it's, it's you know it hasn't reached the, the heights of the NBA yet but I think it's mm -hmm. as close as it's ever been you have legit superstars in the WNBA and then when it correlates to sneakers and I've had a couple of ladies on here and I've, I've, I've we've talked about like some of the uh releases that are you know they end up being unisex but really they made for women like the the Moniers and things like that right mm -hmm. do you think we're close and people would say the Moniers are like the sneaker of the year right like yeah. i you know i love both pairs i have the threes right <laughs> um i need those ones though i'm getting the ones. <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> but um when you see that and you see us a, a release that was tailored for women black mm -hmm. women right meant to be worn by women do you uh -huh. think that there's a there could be a time where the number one sneaker could be the signature sneaker of a WNBA superstar? Definitely. Mm. Most definitely. Because we, we know even for, for those of us that are, you know, we're Jordan heads and retro yeah. Jordan heads. You know, me, I used to work in retail. I used to work at Finish Line. Mm. So anytime... You know, a women's Jordan was released that the guys thought was dope as well. What were they doing? Like, if they fit that size category for yeah. that conversion, yeah, they they were buying it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it it definitely can happen because mm. you know, with with sneaker culture, it's all about you know what's dope mm -hmm. and what's fly. So when the time and it will come, like mm -hmm. that super dope sneaker is going to come out and. Psh, skyrocket and like you said a, a w player will have i'm yeah. gonna say like that will have yeah. a top selling sneaker <laughs> yeah i know there's a dunk coming out um uh i think it's the lisa leslie joint it's supposed to commemorate uh -huh. her time as a, as a uh, spark and then i remember the first time i bought a woman's sneaker and had to figure out the size and then all that out of, out of the ebay i bought the yeah. cheryl swoops joint and that's still exactly. one of my favorite sneakers of all time shouts out to show yeah. swoop man i mean you know back then nike basketball was just dropping all so i don't think they even called it exactly. nike basketball they did. it was so crazy so i do see that i think that we can get to a point where and i think it's soon and, and again i don't think people even look at it like oh it's a WNBA sneaker or it's an nba sneaker i think it's just like with the man it's just like this is a dope sneaker that's it, it happens to be inspired by women which i think it's really really dope but do you think it's important that people know that this sneaker was designed by women, inspired by women, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely important because I know with, with sneaker culture and especially with sneaker design, I think we, we a lot of people tend to still think about guys mm -hmm. are behind it. Mm -hmm. So to know that there is so many women, dope women, dope mm -hmm. black women out here doing their thing in mm -hmm. the culture and that representation matters yeah. because it's going to expire a younger generations. Cause yeah. you know, we, there are young girls out here that are, of course they rocking sneakers. They begging their parents for sneakers. You know, they mm -hmm. asking for the sneakers for Christmas, <laughs> but to see that it goes deeper than just, okay, the sneakers on the shelf. Like, no, oh. this is what's really behind this sneaker. And they could see that like, yo, somebody that looks like me, like yeah. we just tend to think athletes. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. <laughs> yeah 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 but for, for for something like that is yeah it's, it's, it goes way beyond just you know the athletes or mm -hmm. like i said and just a sneaker on the shelf is right. inspiring younger generations to come 
it's the storytelling, you know, like, wow. and, and, you know, I, I, as I think about it, there's, there are women with signature sneakers now. And it's wow. funny because I had uh, my man Chuck Keys on last week and we were talking about how, you know, we've kind of moved past the point of like, oh, this athlete is wearing this sneaker. So now I want to wear it. Maybe that's the worst for kids. Like, you know, but us, you know, we, us yeah, adults, adults, right? right yeah. We look at it different. So there's a bunch of people with, with signature sneakers, business women, business men, you know, um, entertainers, blah, blah, going, going, going. But I do think it's important just for the culture because there's been so many sneakers that's been modeled and promoted by this athlete or that athlete, the Jordan, LeBron. I think it is important that a woman say, hey, I had one that was just as big as the dunk, um, as the, the the Garnett. I mean, the Garnett. Yeah, well, the Garnett, or the, I meant to say the, um, the, the, the KD or the yeah. Kyrie or the whatever. You know what I mean? I think it's just yeah. important that that, that I, think, I think the WNBA and someone, several people in the WNBA deserve that moment because they haven't had it yet. The show suit was dope. You know, the Lisa Leslie, whatever that's dope, but like they right. haven't had that moment where like, yo, my joint is the, is the joint. The kids are wearing it's my sneakers. Right. right. It's, it's coming, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 put, I'm putting it out there. It's, yeah. it's definitely coming. It's definitely coming. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So let's talk about you and your sneaker history. <laughs> you know, I, I, long as I've known you, you've had the heat. That's man. not just your name. That is <laughs> what you wear on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real, like you, you, you know, you known um, anybody that's from DC, the DMV area, know that about. There's a few people in this area that we know got the year, and you one <laughs> of them. Okay, so tell me how you got into that. What what, what got you into sneaker culture? So the funny thing that got me into sneaker culture, I mentioned earlier that um, I used to work for Finish Line, mm-hmm. like back in the day. Um, I got a job with Finish Line after I graduated college because you know it's. So I have to get into your real industry after yeah. college. Yeah. So I was just applying anywhere that could pay the bills because, you know, <laughs> you got to pay back these student loans. Yeah. So I was a manager at Finish Line from like 2002 to I think about like 2008. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know anything about sneakers. Right. They knew I had I had like experience and leadership experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they hired me for that. They didn't hire me for sneaker knowledge. And right. that's the one thing that I learned about working in retail, period. Like yeah. I don't care if this kid knows what Jordan comes out five years from now on this date. And nah, do do they have the other skills? Yeah. But you gotta know, you got your customers coming in that do mm-hmm. wanna know a lot of that stuff. Not just when it comes to, you know, Jordan's. Because when I started off, I was in quote unquote an urban store. I was at the uh, Forestville Mall location. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those in the DMV area, yeah, that's, know the about hood, that's the hood mall. For, Forestville Mall, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> they want to know the people right. coming, they wanted to know what was popping, what's hot, when the joint come out, what is this, what is that. Like, right. So I forced myself to learn mm-hmm. about sneakers and sneaker culture. And of course, being in the store, you know, being the first one when the shipment comes in to see things and just falling in love with stuff. And then I started researching release dates on my own, actually like learning about the history of, that I just turned into that giant sneaker head, mm. all thanks to me working at Finish Line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do it. You know, that's that's a lot of our story. He, you know, like, we, you know, when I talk to people, you know, I've, I've had the honor to talk to so many dope people within the culture. And a lot of them, I would say almost 95 percent of them. This story was I used to work at Foot Locker. I used to work at this. I used to work there. I used to work at Shoe City at the Boulevard. Shouts out to the Boulevard that, ain't, that don't exist no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? So right, we, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Isn't that crazy? But yeah, so I know I know what you're saying. But yeah, so that's that's the, the working in that retail. Um, it, Did it kind of like, you know. Is this, was it a case that like, yo, you always, maybe you always had a, like a, 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 an affinity for cool sneakers, but like working in retail really like blossomed your, your. No, mm. it's, it's really crazy with me. Like I, I didn't give a darn about sneakers at all mm. until I started working at Finish Line. So what, yeah. at that age, I'm already what, like 20, 22, 23 years old. Yeah. So even while, while coming up, you know, I was sometimes recognized that, you know, you know, certain dates back on school, like, okay, everybody's wearing the same kind of shoes. Like, mm-hmm. I guess a shoe came, but I, I really didn't care. <laughs> I used to always joke about this as well. Mm-hmm. When my mom would take me school shopping for new sneakers, I would only get sneakers twice a year. And my thing was, this wasn't, didn't, this didn't come from my mom. It came from me. Mm-hmm. We're not going to spend no more than $50 on my sneakers. Mm. So wow, and, and and that carried on actually into 
I worked that finish line. So yeah. through college, even though, you know, went to HBCU Morgan State and, you know, yeah. people like to say HBCUs are fashion shows, but yeah. even while still in college, I was still like, I'm only going to buy sneakers when I need them or, you know, if I started working out, yeah. but I'm not going to pay no more than $50 for a pair of sneakers. What? <laughs> but once I got to, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You, you know me as a sneakerhead now, yeah. but up until that point where I started working at finish line, I really did not care wow. about sneakers. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> that's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's I'm I'm actually shocked. I never and you you were in my movie and everything, and I never thought to ask you this. <laughs> and I never knew this. Like just so, so okay. You start working at the retail, and what is it? Just like you just is you are you just seeing the, the cool stuff dropping? Or yeah, mm -hmm. wow. started seeing the wow. cool stuff, and it probably it actually probably took me about a year till I even bought like a pair of Jordans. So after yeah. a year, but you know, what's funny? <laughs> I would say what's funny about it. Mm -hmm. Even after you know, I'm, I'm working as a manager and finish line now. I'm, I'm more educated about you know all ends of sneakers. So at mm -hmm. this point now, I'm at a suburban store. I'm at Montgomery Mall in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, one thing about that, I had to learn more about the technical running side of things. So mm -hmm. I, I increased my knowledge about technical running. Mm -hmm. But something said, let me finally buy a pair of Jordans. You know, I've been working mm -hmm. at uh finish line for a year now i think i'm yeah. still buying like cheap on sale stuff like i had like right. a, I, I think one of my work shoes was like an iverson slip on yeah that was like 29. i was still yeah. being that that yeah. person yeah so my first i still remember the first pair of jordans i, I purchased which mm. was the uh cool gray nines mm. however guess how much i paid for them cool gray nines please tell me 49.99 see back in the day i was still being <laughs> no and that's because so this is the thing with when um finish line you was able to research inventory throughout oh, right the company right so we knew that sometimes things would get marked down like you know we get those markdowns sent to yeah. our emails and we'll see that we have one size 15 left for this shoe right this shoe is now 49.99 right right like, i would search the inventory like like that, I wonder if anybody else. This shoe was forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, I wonder if any if any store has it in my size. Right, and they did. So yeah, the store yeah, shipped yeah. it to me. So my first pair of Jordans were the cool gray nines, and nice. I paid forty nine ninety nine. So me still being cheap, saying yeah. I'm not gonna pay fifty dollars for a shoe. No more yeah. fifty dollars. Yeah. Got my first pair of Jordans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. But then I stopped being yeah. cheap cheap after a while and just start using my employee discount as it should be used like what's up will come out dope that i like yeah. i like go ahead you know <laughs> so you fell victim to this horrible habit you almost you fought it for most of for like a, a good chunk of your life and then uh -huh. you fell victim to this awful habit that we all have of chasing these sneakers and spending all this money yeah on these shoes but <laughs> you know, we both know, like, and it's like, here come the old head portion of it, right? <laughs> Back in the day, it used to be like, you know what I mean? But it was, it was, you know, and I think it's like this for a 20 something now. It's like, it's fun chasing. Yeah. They chase differently, obviously, but like, you know, yeah, you gotta get it. I see them getting up for that sneakers app. I'm like, oh my I, God, that app, man. That, that, I just, I just, I just go on. I'll just pay markup on goat. I'm not doing all this. Yo, that's what I was telling Paul, right? I was telling Paul, people know Paul been on this show before. I was telling P at this point, I don't even look at the sneaker. The sneaker join one, right? One came out yesterday. I forget what came out. The, uh, uh, the blue joints. I can't even think of the name of them. Right. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. The blue Marinas. That's what they called Marina blue or whatever. Right. 170 retail. I go in my mind. That shoe don't cost 170. That shoe cost 240. That's what the that's the cost of the shoe in my mind. I'm not going to spend one hundred and seventy dollars on that shoe. And if you're listening right now, it's going. That makes no sense. But that's what happens when you when you have this this hobby. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. But for us, it was a little different. We chased a little different Nike talk, all that stuff that was around, all those little you know, all those sites and stuff that we used to uh, deal with. What do you what do you think about where sneaker culture is now? Like, do you still enjoy it? Oh, you froze up. But wait a minute. I heard there you go. Something. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. You need me to repeat the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I think that's that's actually on my end. Hold on. Let me um let me come mm -hmm. back. 
exactly. My son in here playing the game. My wife probably down there doing some stuff too. So, oh, you know how I got. Yeah, yeah. And I feel for y'all, especially yeah. I heard during the pandemic, everybody had to oh, boost all day. Ah, look, I got. I'm, I'm sitting right next to a booster right now. So, but, <laughs> but um, all right. Let me repeat this question. So, um, yes. you know, back in the day, you know, we we it was a little different for us. We had Nike Talk and we waited yep. in line and all that stuff. Yes. You know, we we yes. chased. Some people would drive to different states to get stuff. All of that. Yes. Um. And a lot of people have nostalgia for that. Mm-hmm. Some of that stuff was stressful, just as stressful as getting on the Nike app, right? <laughs> what do you what do you think about sneaker culture now? Do you still is it still something that you enjoy? The only thing I enjoy about it now <laughs> is probably when I'm able to get the shoes. Yeah. But it's we definitely can't do, like you said, the the driving around and the chase and, and knowing mm-hmm. and inventory because it's changed so much, like even right. stores, right. like stores have to change how they handle big releases, period. Like right. we, we saw it, I saw it starting to happen during my last year finish line where it was like, all right, you know, these people that have to do it this way. Then we saw, yeah. you know, how, how raffles and yeah. now stores like don't even show up, period. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Unless you up. already right. did this two weeks ago right. and we already notified them people right. two weeks ago. Um, right. So with with that aspect, I guess I could say like I guess that's like the purchaser, the, the, mm-hmm. you know, making the consumer mm-hmm. side of things with it. Um, the thing that is enjoyable though is to see just how far everything has come along and the people that could do collabs, and mm-hmm. now it you don't get a. Uh, laughed at from wearing other brands now because they were certain yeah. brands that were not cool you know a few years ago that are cool right. now like we could right. say that about you know being from the dmv like new balance yeah you know new balance yeah. we were hardcore new balance but now mm-hmm. to see all these different you know new balance that's coming out and people mm-hmm. snatching them up and yeah. you know like mark up a markup on new balance like, it's, it's bizarre <laughs> it's bizarre it's bizarre it's, it's, it's bizarre yeah so just just to see how many people and i know folks like my age and you know the, the old heads or whatnot mm. may feel a certain way but that's with anything you know that's happening period yeah with yeah. all that we deal with you know we yeah. just gotta adapt to how to you know consume things differently how to purchase things blah 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 you know we go through it in the sneaker culture we go through it in in the music industry, you know, I'm sure you as a podcast, I've seen your evolution, the yeah. different ways you have to do things now because it yeah. is so it's a saturated market now. And you are OG in this, so you're OG. probably like, Earth, like, Earth, <laughs> like, Earth. but I got <laughs> you, you have to adjust, class. yeah, 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 but you have to adjust yeah. to how just our world is evolving. So, right. like, I'm never going to be like a hater with, with mm-hmm. things in the sneaker culture just because right. you have to do these things now or you have to get on the sneakers app. It's just, right. it's just a part of life, man. <laughs> it's a part of life. And, you know, it's funny you bring up evolution because I've seen the evolution in you and one of the, the, the new tools to use not only for sneaker heads, sneaker buyers, consumers, and just people that want to have fun and get entertained is TikTok. You <laughs> are... You you are one of the people I feel like has mastered that app. You know, <laughs> I, I do feel I mean I'm not I'm not trying to gas you. I, I really believe that you know you and a few other people that that and I, I'm I'm it's cool to know people that have like mastered that app and it's like mm-hmm. you know you figured out how to so let me just let me just get into it. Like how did you get into using TikTok? Like what what about TikTok drew you to it? Um, I, I think like many of us when TikTok had their big explosion, because it's been around for years, but yeah. during the pandemic, it exploded because right. well, we're, we were all in the house. Right. And it gave us something to do and distract us yeah. from just being bored in the house and in the house bored. <laughs> shout out to TikTok. Right. Shout out to TikTok. But it gave right. us something to do. So that was me. But I actually... During 2020, I was the one, I was just scrolling, watching everybody else's videos mm-hmm. in 2020. I didn't actually make my first TikTok post until mm-hmm. 2021. Mm-hmm. 
And for real, so what made me make my first TikTok post is because the Washington Wizards were, were doing something where they were showcasing me and our host, Britt Waters. Mm-hmm. And they were Shout to Britt. TikTok. We had to do a day in the life. You know, you yeah. see day in the life TikToks, they popular. So I was like, uh, might as well start using it. Mm-hmm. We started posting. So like most people, when you're new to posting, you're just, going, mm-hmm. you're just trying whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm like, maybe will people like the sports stuff I post? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. When people then I had a song that was coming out um yep. in April. So I was like, my song is about mm-hmm. TikTok. So let me mm-hmm. use TikTok to promote my song. But who mm-hmm. knew from in March 2021 making my first TikTok post just mm-hmm. you know for Wizards content. April 2021, I released my single and I was like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna promote TikTok you know, promote my single on TikTok. Mm-hmm. In May 2021 is when I posted my first go-go video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Because I was just, like I said, at that point, I was just trying different things. Mm-hmm. And something in me said, you know, let me do some DJ stuff. Let me yeah. do some cool DC stuff. Because I'm like, we love these go-go versions of songs in DC more than we love the original version. Yep. Let me make a TikTok about that. Yep. Yep. I had no clue it would take off like that. Yep. And I started just making more. And then within a few months, I'm getting featured for being a TikTok star. I'm like, what is happening? And then I just make other funny DC related TikToks. It just mm-hmm. crossed my mind. Like recently, I was like, why do we add an S at the end of everything? <laughs> I, I didn't know that it would take off like that. So it's, it's, yeah. it's wild to see. Like when I go out, I get recognized more now. As like the TikTok DJ. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think that's the coolest thing in the world. I really do. Cause it's because it's hip hop. Like it's it's that's you know, this show, the thing, you know, when when I when I spoke to the people over at iHeart and, mm-hmm. and you know, the people at on my feet and we when we were developing this, that the and you know, even back from the movie, you know, the thing I really wanted to show is how sneaker culture is a subculture of hip hop, that it always comes back to hip hop and then it always comes back to black culture you know what i mean and we in february and we and i and i just think that's so cool because you get on there and you 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 show something that is a not only a uh a subculture of black culture go go i'm talking about Uh subculture which is it's not i don't even want to call it a subculture of hip-hop because it's like a it's like a sister to hip-hop it's not even you know they kind of came around at the same time and i think it's just really dope how you know you've evolved and used this new tool to talk about go-go music, talk about DC culture, and to really get yourself in a in a in a dope position. I think it's I think it's super awesome. I really thank do. you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> I really do. I think it's cool, man. So that's 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 um get ready to wrap this up. I I with one last question and one last yes. thing I really wanted to uh really really touch on. Um you know, you again, you talk about evolution, you talk about where things are going, you do a good job of accepting where things are going, bringing it back to the sneakers um, with, with TikTok, with all of these new tools and ways to to break down sneakers and all that. Like, where do you see it going? Do you think it's going to be more micro content or, you know, with, with like NFTs? I know I'm asking a extremely loaded question, Ooh. but I the, the thing I really want to just ask you is like, <laughs> where do you where do you? Do you see sneakers continuing to evolve or do you see a drop off in the culture? I definitely do not see a drop off mm-hmm. at all because just seeing as you as you mentioned like content wise mm-hmm. to see all the different types of content that revolves around sneaker mm-hmm. culture with not just like the the websites and and the IG pages but mm-hmm. even like I said when I'm on TikTok seeing yeah. different things within the culture like like the funniest thing to me mm-hmm. seeing on TikTok is sneaker employees posting the stuff when it gets oh, when the yes. shit that comes in yes. I'm like, yo we used to get fired if we post we something did. for the release date yo for but real <laughs> it's encouraged yeah it's encouraged yeah. i wouldn't even be surprised if you know some of these employees they they not got you know some some deals from their employers or yeah. maybe some sneaker companies like hey we know you got a following can you hype up this release for us and even when you mentioned nfts mm-hmm. um nike got into the nft space yes they did yeah they, they're and prepared. Adidas. Yep. yeah they, so mm-hmm. they're ready yeah 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 <laughs> so we go to see how that is going to continue to mm-hmm. evolve and 
you know, with, with so many different brands out here and not just the major brands, but I'm seeing the love from like independent brands mm -hmm. and, and to come up and, you know, sh shout out my homie Rock Deep. Every time I wear his sneakers, people mm. stop me and ask like, yo, like, what are those? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sharing the info like, yo, this is my homie. He got his own sneaker yeah. line. Check it yeah. out. Yeah. Like, stuff yeah. like that. So that shows you how like the culture is just continuing to grow in it. But it's, it's definitely, it's no slowing down. It's, it's going to be very interesting to yeah. see what takes place in the next few years because yeah. i know all like the brands they they're thinking years in advance just, just yeah. with the inter introduction of them getting into the metaverse <laughs> yeah we yeah. know it's some crazy things coming <laughs> yeah. definitely definitely <laughs> definitely well i know one thing that's not going to stop and that's you please continue to do you keep doing your thing I, I i know i keep saying it but i am super proud of you thank you so much for john knocking my mic over see i'm excited yeah. i am knocking my mic over <laughs> <laughs> No, but seriously, thank you so much for doing the show. Um, I'm, I'm so happy I was able to get on your schedule, big timer. Keep doing, oh, stop your, it. <laughs> keep doing your thing. I hope we get to talk again soon. Thank you, Adam. You the man, dog. Hey, 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 hey. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> shout out to DJ Heat for joining the show. Big shout out to you for tuning into the show. Be sure to follow me, MSR underscore Adam. Follow the team up on game network and on my feet network for all of the cool content remember to mind your mental health remember to mind your physical health and until next time ladies and gentlemen remember to be great